Gear to avoid. Yep, there's actually gear you should avoid as a new hacker or when upgrading the gear that you already have and gear I wouldn't even recommend to my worst enemy. This is especially true if you are new to hiking and it is so easy just to go for the first thing that you find or the first recommendation that you get. When talking about gear to avoid, I'm not only talking about the weight here, uh, even if that is important, but also that they are outdated and bulky and better alternatives do exist. Today it is all about those items you should avoid and why. It may be the most important thing what you might consider buying instead, so stay tuned. Haven't we all visited a store for outdoor equipment and been offered help and advice what gear we should buy? I mean, there's nothing wrong with good advice, don't get me wrong here, but sometimes I get the feeling that they don't know what's out there. And too often I see pictures and posts of people using and buying gear that I would never recommend to anyone. Uh, it could be because of the weight could be because of the size or it could be because they are outdated and much better alternatives do exist. Now let's take a look at the first one. Avoid old style backpacks like the Fjellreven Kaika. I mean 75 liters and at 3.3 kilos. What? Now Kaika is actually a really rugged backpack that will last a lifetime and that gives good support for heavier loads. But there's no real reason to buy a 3.3 kilo backpack for 75 liters. There are so many good packs out there around or slightly above one kilo that are equally good, equally strong and that can carry a bit of load if you want to add a little bit of extra gear with a good and nice support. Just take the ULA equipment for example and their catalyst. That is a framed 75 liter pack, so exactly the same size and in one of the best materials out there for backpacks, the Ultra Fabrics. And that can take loads up to 18 kilos with no problems. All of that and at 1.1 kilo, a third of the weight of a Kaika. By doing that you save 2.2 kilos instantly without sacrificing anything. Actually, you're improving because Ultra fabric is highly water resistant and very wear resistant as well. ULA isn't the only uh, brand with this kind of backpacks. MVC, for example, Lundhogs now changing and developing lighter packs. So don't go out there and buy the old classics. There's no real reason. They are outdated. The first stove people think about when talking about hiking and outdoor use is Trangia, at least here in Sweden. One being the popular Trangia 27.1 UL at 690 grams, that is a small one to two person set and one of the lightest one they have. But it is very bulky and to be honest I wouldn't recommend an alcohol stove to anyone unless you're really into it or maybe if you like making your own stoves like these soda can stoves. A big downside is also that you can't cook inside your tent, inside the vestibule, because the flame is just too high and the risk is too great to accidentally tip it over and spill out the alcohol and have a fire going inside your tent in seconds. Then also uh, it is very slow and the fuel is heavy. Instead go for a gas stove and a small pot for boiling water and maybe a small frying pan if you really want to cook. A gas stove is also very easy to use and to control the heat and it is safe enough to be used inside a tent if you have a good ventilation. My favorites is the ones from Soto, like the Windmaster or the Amicus. Both are canister stoves and for the pots you have the Avenue or Tokes in titanium. Such a system doesn't need to weigh much like the one I have here. This is the Avenue Titanium 550 pot and inside I have my, whoops, my Soto Windmaster. This complete set weighs in at 142 grams. That is more than 500 grams less than the one from Trangia. So you save a lot of weight and you save a lot of space. So avoid alcohol stoves. Much lighter, better and safer alternatives exist. Self-inflating pads. Avoid 
self-inflating sleeping pads. They are bulky, heavy and not very comfortable, but they are cheap, so that is something positive. Often you see this type of three season sleeping pads around one kilo or more. The reason them not being very comfortable is the thickness. They are not very thick and usually not more than a couple of centimeters. The way to go instead is the inflatable pads. And sure, they are a little bit more delicate normally, but they don't wear down quicker than any other pad if you take a little bit of care. Funny by the way, because the self-inflating pads, they are not self-inflating at all. Hmm. Anyways, the inflating pads are thicker, lighter and way more comfortable and they also pack down smaller and for a three season pad like with an R value of 3.5 and above, you can easily find one around 350 grams and up. Don't buy self-inflating pads. Avoid synthetic sleeping bags for three season hiking like the Hogloves Taurus for example, a <laughs> zero degree comfort temperature at 1.8 kilo. That is extremely heavy and bulky for a three season sleeping bag. Now I know that a uh, synthetic sleeping bag is sometimes the preferred choice, like in humid conditions. And also for those who want to take a stand against the feather business. I totally do understand. Most of the time they are also cheaper. But there are lighter synthetic options out there and in this case no problem finding a zero degree sleeping bag at 1.2 kilos or a synthetic quilt with the same comfort temperature slightly above 800 grams like the EE Enigma Apex. If you're up for reducing your weight even further then you go for a down sleeping bag or a quilt. If we are talking about temperatures in comfort around zero degrees, we are talking about weights from 500 grams and up. And if you don't know what a quilt is, it's a sleeping bag without the hood and without the backside. So you lie directly on top of the pad and wears a beanie on your head when sleeping to keep your head warm. And that saves a lot of weight and space. Avoid heavy and bulky three season sleeping bags and look what alternatives you have and buy the lightest one that fits your needs and your budget. This episode has nothing to do with ultralight hiking, even though some of the gear mentioned here today fits into that category. But what I meant for this episode was to talk about making choices based on the weight, the bulk and your needs. You can with these changes we have talked about here today, the backpack, the stove, the sleeping pad and the sleeping bag. And without buying ultra light gear, reduce your weight by at least four kilo and bulk even more with maintained functionality and increased comfort. And then we haven't even talked about the tents, the rain gear and clothes and other stuff that you bring on your hikes. That has to be in another episode. This is just a couple of things I believe you should avoid and what you might consider buying instead. Now I'm very much looking forward to hearing your comments and suggestions and recommendations to new hikers and those interested in an update by leaving a comment. But for now, this is it. If you liked today's episode, take a look at these two recommendations on my other videos. Also do hit like, subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on any future content. I hope to see you again next week, but for now, take care, safe hiking and bye bye.